You had your AR-15 to protect someone's property, correct? I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to ask you to go into the library uh, again for a moment, please. Please don't talk about the case. to strongly admonish him, and the next time it happens, I'll be asking for a mistrial with prejudice. He's an ex Mr. Finger? First of all, Your Honor, this was the subject of a motion. I'm well aware of that, and the court left the door open. This for me, not for you. My understanding of You your should have come and asked. For, uh, for reconsideration, you did on the one motion, and in fact, I granted your motion for reconsideration. That was excuse on our me, motion. I, I, uh, not sorry, uh, excuse me, I, I, I did, I granted. We did not move that to reconsider. That was their motion. I, I, We've I, not filed any me, motions to reconsider in this case. That was their motion for reconsideration, which I denied. But uh, I said, I denied it, or I indicated a bias towards denial is what I did. Held it open with a bias towards denial. Why would you think that that made it okay for you without any advance notice to bring this matter before the jury. You are already, you were, I, I was a, astonished when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post-arrest silence. That's basic law, it's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that. And it gives, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So I don't know what you're up to. May I respond? Yes. We filed another acts motion on this exact issue because in my mind, and I argued this, it is identical to what was going on on the night of August 25th in the sense that the defendant was using this exact same weapon. He was using it in a manner to try and protect property. No, he wasn't. There's, Your Honor, I, with all due respect. I'm not gonna rehash the motion. Yeah, that's absolutely untrue. It and is, there's, no, no, no. Your arguments of record, my comments are of record, and why I ruled as I did is of record. There's nothing that I heard in this trial to suggest that anything's changed, even if you're correct in your assumption that you know more than uh, I did at the time. Uh, you should have come to the court and say, I want to go into this. Uh, why you would think that you could go into it without any advance notice to the court, I don't understand that. And as the uh, defense is pointing out, you're an experienced trial lawyer, and this should not have been gone into. Your Honor, there have been things in this case testimony in this case that I believe opens the door to this. For example, the defense has introduced evidence that the defendant pointed a gun at a man wearing yellow pants because that person was on a car on the car source lot. Now there's no justification that I can think of why the defendant would point that gun at someone. The defendant has just testified this morning that he agreed with that person in the yellow pants that he pointed the gun at him. He said I was joking when I said that to the guy in the yellow pants, but he said He's acknowledged that he told the person in the yellow pants, yeah, you're right, I did point a gun at you when you were sitting on a car. He said, I did. That's what he Exactly. Said, right? So he's agreeing. May I finish, please? I'd like to have a chance to make a record, if I could, without being interrupted, if that's okay. He has mentioned that he has, he's acknowledged that he's used this gun to protect property. He's also just acknowledged that he knows he can't do that. I am attempting to impeach him now with the prior August 10th incident. 15 days prior, involving the same gun, where he is threatening to use that gun to protect property. It he goes. Have the gun with him. Your Honor, he is saying he wished he did so he could shoot people. You know, there's a lot of difference between commenting about something when you haven't got a gun and threatening someone when you do. You know, it's interesting, Your Honor, because the entire defense theory in this case is Joseph Rosenbaum, who was unarmed. I want you to tell me what the defense theory of the case is. I want. May I, look, res may I respond look. to what you just said, Your Honor? I'd like to respond to what you Can just you said. Go down? I, I apologize, Madam Court Reporter, but I'd like to try and make a record without anyone interrupting me, if that's okay. I believe that there is a central part of this case that Mr. Rosenbaum is making threats that he has no ability to carry out. So, to your point, Your Honor, you're arguing that this August 10th incident, one, one aspect of why you don't believe it's relevant is the defendant didn't have the gun with him. 
this case is about someone who didn't have a weapon, and yet the jury is being told because of those threats, that means the defendant has to defend himself. So with all due respect, Your Honor, mere verbal threats have already been shown to this jury and used as a basis for someone's subsequent actions. I am attempting with the defendant to use his mere verbal threat on August 10th 15 days prior that he's going to shoot shoplifters with his AR-15 to impeach the defendant in a murder trial. I would ask the court's forbearance to do that. I apologize, Your Honor. You're right. I probably should have brought this to your attention earlier. I may have misunderstood your ruling because I made that more relevant. You would admit it or at least consider it it's an admittance. I believe based on the evidence that we've heard, and more specifically, exactly what the defendant said earlier about admitting pointing a gun at someone who was merely jumping or sitting on a car, that the door is open now to this testimony. And I continue to believe that his state of mind, his intent, his belief as to self-defense is the core of this case. That was the basis for my motion. You were strongly inclined against it. I understand that. But now we're in the middle of trial, and there's been a lot of evidence that's come in that I think makes this relevant. So I'm attempting to impeach the defendant on his beliefs. I believe I'm entitled to impeach the defendant on his beliefs and on his statements. I'm going to interrupt you now, because you're talking about his beliefs. I think that's what they call his statements to your Because he just said, can't use deadly force, can't threaten to use deadly force to protect property. So now I'm impeaching him on that. Your Honor, what's... The court has seen no reason to change its ruling. And just so this record is clear, in spite of the lengthy statement by Mr. Binger, before we started today, the court specifically stated in Mr. Binger's presence, there's been nothing to have me change any of my rulings. There have been numerous occasions during this trial where they've opened the door. The one time when they're going into Mr. Rosenbaum's prior the reason he doesn't like guns, and I said something, I whispered in Mr. Krause's ear, it's because of the prior convictions. Please stop. And he did. He knows if you're going to go into something that's been excluded in a pretrial order, you better ask the court, you better get permission. This is ridiculous. It, was, it wasn't excluded, Your Honor. You know why it was excluded in the first place? Because it's, it was propensity evidence. That is exactly what 90404 is designed to prevent. You're talking about his attitudes. His attitude is he wants to shoot people. Now, I've admitted that kind of evidence in other trials when it's been appropriate. I didn't admit it in this case because, to me, what I've heard in this trial, and by the way, Mr. Richards absolutely correctly points out that just hours ago, I said I had heard nothing in this trial to change any of my rulings. That was before so the why? Testimony, Your Honor. Pardon me? That was before the Don't get brazen with me. Uh, uh, you knew very well. You know very well that an attorney can't go into these types of areas when the judge has already ruled without asking outside the presence of the jury to do so. So don't give me that. That's number one. Number two, this is propensity evidence. I said at the time that I made my ruling, and I'll repeat again now for you, I see no similarity between talking about wishing you had your AR gun, which you don't have, <laughs> so that you could take fire rounds at these uh, thought to be shoplifters, and the incidents in these cases, which are not, there's nothing in your case that suggests the defendant was lying in wait to shoot at somebody, or reflecting upon the shooting for a vast amount of time. Every one of the incidents involves a, a matters that involve seconds in time. So I don't, I commented at the time, I don't see the similarity, and I don't see the similarity now. If it's not similar, that's, that's the whole rule. Those are all the exceptions to 90404. Check the authorities. Wigmore and evidence. Judge Weinstein. Colonel McCormick. It's the, the prior act has to bear the signature of the accused, or it has to be so similar as to suggest it's a common plan or something like that. You have an incident where he's making comments about some alleged shoplifters versus and crimes that involve instantaneous actions, whether premeditated murder or whether self-defense, that's for the jury to decide. But I don't see the similarity. I said it couldn't come in, and it isn't coming in, no matter what you think. Number two, I, I have to be concerned that 
with what Mr. Richards has said about the the, the progress of the trial, and and um, when when you were way well, I said you were over the line and uh, close to or over the line on commenting on the defendant's pretrial silence, which is a well-known rule. I, I, I I'm astonished that that would have been an issue. So I don't want to have another issue as long as this case continues. Is that clear? It is. Thank you. I ask the jury to come back in. That you told police in this case over the phone. Investigator Johnson. Johnson. Wait a minute. Don't interrupt her question, Mr. Skirt. Let her finish her question. She's asking the same question no, over and over. Be quiet. No, she's. Be quiet. Now, she asked you a question. You, you wait till she finishes. Yeah, I'm a growing man. And then answer it, okay? Yeah. And she won't interrupt your answer either. Because the court order yeah. can't take down two people at once. Is that clear? Yeah. Sir? Yeah, that's very clear. All right. Now, Detective Carpo, as we talk about compromising a crime scene, now, you can confirm your knowledge of a wallet being removed, correct? Yes. But you don't know if there was other items, like a weapon, that could have also been removed from that crime scene, correct? Correct. You don't know if other item had been moved from one place and put in another place. Yes, Your Honor, there is absolutely no evidence that anything was moved. That's right, there's no evidence of that. Don't imply something else that there is no evidence of, none. There's been no evidence introduced in this case by any witness that is even close to that. That assumes facts, not in evidence. Sustain. Move on to a relevant question. Like to Don't down. imply things that have not occurred and are not in evidence. Move on. I'd like to now go to state 83, please, the during video. And some, some people were um, swearing. Absolutely. And would you describe other people's demeanors as upset or angry? Um, it's, it's, I, I don't know if you've seen anybody be killed, but it's upsetting. Okay. Um, I yes, I was just going to object, Your Honor. As argumentative, and you can proceed. We are outside the hearing of the jury. Ms. Hanson, I'm advising you, do not argue with counsel, and specifically, do not argue with the court. Is that the I, camera, I, though? Are the cameras off? No, they are not. We are on the record. Okay. You will not argue with the court. You will not argue with counsel. Mm -hmm. They have the right to ask questions. Your job is to answer them. I was finishing my answer. I will determine when your answer is done. Okay, well. And so, do not argue with the court. Do not argue with mm -hmm. counsel. Answer the questions. Do not volunteer information that is not requested. The attorneys for the state have redirect. They can ask you questions if they think that certain things were left out. Okay. It is counsel's prerogative to ask you leading questions and for you to answer those and not a volunteer additional information. Okay. Are we clear on this? We're clear. Thank you. Come back tomorrow at 9.30. All right. Do we have the gentleman who did the videoing? Do we know? He's, uh, will be available later, Your Honor. He said at the end of the day, I'm trying to get him your way. Okay. What was the threat? Did Mr. Mummert know about this threat? Mr. Mummert knew about the threat. And what was it? You can move closer if you want, or that's fine. You can come inside the well about where Mr. Mummert's at. What was the threat? From who to whom? In Mr. Mummer's office building, there was a gentleman who was looking at net, looking for a vantage point um, on the floor below Mr. Mummer at a place where there's uh, kids in school, where, where they uh, organize the kids to go to school. In My office is one floor above the Early Lo uh, Learning Coalition um, on Winkler. Um, it, okay. They, uh, they called the police on him. The police arrived. He, he said that or he, the woman he talked to, he told the woman that um, she wanted to know what he was doing. Uh, he says everybody will know in a couple of days. It's going to be all over the news. Um, evidently involved in building across the street uh, as well. The sheriff's office, building across the street or across the parking lot, hired the sheriff's department to stay in the parking lot. I had a discussion with the sheriff. Um, he was reported to the police. Uh, there was some concern. Actually, there was well, some who was it? I don't remember his name. Like Chris so what would that have to do with videoing random people leaving my courtroom? Well, Your Honor, we frequently uh, video in the lobby to see witness reactions and things like that. And Not that I'm aware of. This is the first I've ever had it happen, and I've been a judge for 12 years. At least it's the first time it's been reported to me, and my staff's pretty good. Yeah. Many times, you know, we're all put an investigator out in the lobby, just like the state does with their investigators. They have them. They don't videotape people. Yeah. No, they don't. And I understand the, the videotape. I, I, who's paying for this? We are. I am. My office. Mr. Mummert's not paying for it? No. 
But anyway, Your Honor, the point was we weren't sure what. Well, I mean, before you said it was a threat, now it's now it's reactions from people. I mean, which is it? Well, no, in this particular case, the incident we're talking about, he was outside in the lobby with the TV cameras, and he was approached by one of the bailiffs and asked what he was doing there, and he said he was hired by me. The bailiff came to me and said he can't um, film there, and he said there was a court order, and I immediately shut it down and had him leave the building. Well, it's general practice. I think there's actually signs that there's no video recording in this courthouse, period. It's not even my, my rule. It's a rule by the chief judge and for the whole building, which is why you have to get approval to videotape in here, well, and which is why I expel people from my courtroom who do it. I and and I, I just, I, I'll be blunt, this, this has a, a, a feel to it uh, of, I can't put my thumb on it, but I wouldn't say nefarious, but there's, it just doesn't smell right. And again, Your Honor, absolutely no disrespect intended for the court. Is, are, you, are you the investigator for any of the other collateral cases involved with this one that are in the civil division? No. No, no Your Honor. It's nothing like that. With my sincere apologies, if I thought for a moment that we were I th I, any of your rules, I would not do. You need him for anything else in this case? Okay. I think you should go. Okay. Thank you. But I, that other gentleman, I need to talk to him. Make sure he still gets here, but I think you should leave for the rest of the proceedings in this case and any of the co-defendants. Anything further state? Mr. Mummer? Mr. Mummer, you can let me know when that gentleman's here, and I'll have a discussion with him as well. Thank you. For the record, Mr. Hunter is present, Mr. Mummer, and Mr. Sievers. Are you the gentleman who was filming outside of my courtroom? Yes, sir. Come on up. You stand over there by Mr. Mummer. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this matter here today? Yes. You can put your hand down, sir. Please state your name for the record. Are you, are you under the influence of any alcohol, narcotics, or drugs here today? Have you ever been di diagnosed with a mental disorder that would make it difficult for you to understand why you're here today? Uh, I've been diagnosed with bipolar. Are you taking medication for that? Yes. Uh, does it affect your ability to understand what we're talking about? Sir, why were you filming outside of my courtroom? I was hired by Mr. Olson. And what specifically did he hire you to do? He, he was worried about, he said there was a shady character he was concerned about. He was having uh, monitoring the lobby of the courtroom. That's all I know. He's a friend of mine, so I decided, I decided to come out and help him out. He gave you the name of this person? No, but he, he didn't know the name of the guy. He was a tall, tall gentleman, tall, skinny, elderly gentleman. gentleman. And did he, uh, so he gave you a description? Yes. And did he point him out in my courtroom? Not in the courtroom, but we were in the lobby. He was out talking to me. He said, that's the guy he was concerned about. Well, I was under the impression you were filming more than one person coming out of my courtroom. Well, he also told me, he said, well, I'm there to uh, film reactions for uh, the witnesses leaving as well. For what purpose? I don't know. I didn't ask him. Did you talk to Mr. Olson today downstairs? Uh, when I came in, yeah. I saw him down there. I think I told him to leave. Is there anything else going on in this courthouse? I don't know. If he's not involved in that, he needs to leave the building. Uh, how much did he pay you? Uh, that's still to be determined. Okay. Have you done this kind of work for him before outside of a courtroom? Not for him, no. Okay. You can see why I'm concerned. It, it, it's, it has a, a, a almost an air of witness intimidation about it. I, I can see that. You do understand that there are signs out front that say you're not allowed to videotape in this courthouse unless you have permission. I was unaware of that, Your Honor. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Nothing from the state, correct? Nothing from the state. Defense? Just, uh, Your Honor, this was not a request for um, recommendation of the defense. Noted for the record. You've paid um, Mr. Olson for services in this case? The JAC has paid Mr. Olson. That's going to be scrutinized. Okay. Anything else from the state? Uh, Judge, I'll need because I heard the court's order. I explained, exchanged pleasantries with Mr. Olson on the first floor as I was coming up just now. Um, and so I'm just informing well, I'm just surprised court. he's here. I told him to leave this floor in this courtroom. And uh, if there's no other business that he's here for, I'm, I'm a little befuddled by why he would be here. He was on the phone. I said hi. He said hi back. And I got on the elevator. OK. Anything else from the defense? No, you are. We're in standby again. We'll go off the record. Mr. Olson, why were you having people taped outside of my courtroom the other day? We were concerned about a, a threat that had been made a couple of days before Thanksgiving. What would that have to do with taping people coming outside of my courtroom, including witnesses? 
You didn't have permission, did you? I'm not aware, Your Honor, that there was not permissible. There was some suspicious activity on the left side over there. That's why I got it. The record was coming out of the door. How many people did you record? I don't know, Your Honor. I have not seen the video. Who's the gentleman who did it? It is uh, or one of our technical guys. He needs to be here by the end of the day. Okay. State's ready. Yes, sure. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. You're unaware of any of this, correct? Yes, none of this was in my direction. Okay. Bring him out.